My name is Dmitry. I have nothing to sell you. I just want to share some of my previous project experience. Today we dive into the world of the design system and their critical role in app development. With over a decade of experience in cross-platform and native applications, uh, I have been involved in more than 30 projects. Uh, I bring a wealth of knowledge to this topic. As you embark on your application development journey, understanding the design system is paramount. This is particularly true for cross-platform applications where unique challenges can arise. I do not recommend you to work with a designer who doesn't use any design system. Believe me, there's a lot of designers who do not understand how the design system should look like. They do not use uh, any of the existing design system at all. So let's split this to the some simple steps which you can use and implement if you want. I will bring a canvas here for you and we will start making a notice and uh, start writing a point points so you can use it directly while speaking and this will be a, some particular step which you can can implement to your niche or your development application so let's start with the first one so the first one will be you need to understand why you are selecting some of the specific design so let me just bring this here uh, you need so um, you need to understand why you are selecting some of the design system whatever it would be a material or cupertino design or wise design you name it uh, but you need to understand why you select this why you select this design the reason may be because you have a specific framework which better use with this design for example the material framework better to use with the native uh, android development or, or with the father framework for example this is the reason. You need to define the reason, basically. This is the first one. Yes, you definitely need the place where you will define all the components. So in your, in our case, this is the Figma where we have all of the components. This is basically the page. We have all the components there and we can bring them uh, in one place. Uh, this will do the trick actually, and it will be very powerful. You cannot even imagine how many projects I saw uh, where they didn't have a Figma file or, the, or other place where they define these elements, which creates a lot of problems. They need to come back later to fix some of the design problems if they don't have a design system. And basically this is also a problem for the development team because whatever you change something in the design, you need to change something in the front end. It's basically going to be more cost for you. As I said earlier, you can go away from design patterns in some cases where you need some custom components, but you still need to have a rule about why you do this. And this rule should be defined somewhere, basically with your designer or whatever, where you are doing this. In the case you have a place where all of your design elements is defined, it will be easy to support them because you have an only one place where you need to change something. And the same will be for the front-end developers because they have only one place where they can find those components and they can make a code from this uh, design system. So they will have only one component in their code system where they also need to make changes. So on the point, if you have a place with your elements, the only thing which you need to do with your front-end engineers is just to code those elements and use them across the app. I know it sounds easy and it is easy. If you started doing the everything correctly from the start, it will be easy to do later. So this is our first step. Our second step will be you need to create and connect all of the elements from your design system to basically your design. So when you make in a design, you already have a design system from which uh, uh, an elements from which you creating a design. And you do not make in this from the A or somewhere. So the second step will be create. For sure, you can create the custom elements and rules for these elements while you created them and define these rules and write this down. Uh, so here I want to bring a specific thing. I want to start with this, this called atomic design. And this is about the design principles and elements in general. So if I will go to the atomic design site, as you see here, you just can type it somewhere. And this is the atomic elements, which tell us about that all design system 
created from specific atoms, molecules, and so on. So if I will scroll this a bit down, this is explanation where it's created and why it's created. But this is a picture which we need to basically remember. So all of your design elements and all, all of your designs will should be created from this um, specific structure. You need to understand this structure. So basically all your elements will be in this place and all of your design pages will be in this place. Elements contains an atoms and elements also can be already a molecules and elements also ca uh, can be already an organism. Let me just bring up our design system and I will explain you what I mean and what I mean here. If I will go there, this is all of our components and basically I can show this to you. So in some cases, I want to bring this down. So in some cases we have an atoms where the atom will be this icon. And when you have an icon with the, some specific state here, this is already a molecule. Why? Because the atom doesn't have a state, but the molecular have a state. This is super simple. Uh, atoms doesn't have a state, molecules uh, does have a state. And basically all your your atoms can be here as the icon says, or just specific. This basically, a text on the button is also an atom. And the style of the button, this is also an atom. When you combine them and this already become a molecule, because these buttons have a state. For example, the enable state, right? Disable state, whatever. Clickable, where you click that. And the same for other places. When you have already defined your atoms and you already define all of your molecules, basically you need, you can go further and you can create an organisms. An organism, organisms in this, in our case, for example, will be this state, right? Because this state this element already contain an atom where in our case will be this, for example, this atom or this atom, the text. Then atom become to be, an atom become to be a molecule because uh, this type of dropdown already have a state and is clickable and this state is changing. Basically, when you have a couple of molecules together, this can be defined as an organism because this organism already contained inside the molecules. I, b I believe you understand the idea. When you have a lot of molecules, you can combine them, you can combine them to create a template. This is a template. This all a template. This template contains, as you see also from this image, this template contains an organism. And from this template, you already can create a page because the page contains the uh, templates templates contains the organisms in this case this type and a lot of organisms can create the atoms and they all together they they create in a page i believe you you got this principle so if i will go back to the our canvas if i will bring back our canvas and we will see that third step you need deeply understand your core principles let me elaborate this and just write this so what I mean by this, that you basically need to go there and understand why you use specific design system and what is the core princ principles of this design system. And it will need you because in some cases you will have moments where you need to break the rules as we define it in the first step. You need to break the rules and to make consistency. You basically need to understand what changes there and why. This is a big lift, but you need this to understand from scratch. Okay, so regarding the understanding and the concept, as I said, I will not hide anything from you. I will bring up our design system and we will start this, describing this and we will start trying, we will try to understand our design principles, why we use those approach. If I will bring the material design and I will show you this basically a, a guideline, right? So you can scroll down, you can by yourself uh, do a research, one interesting thing is that, uh, is that if I will scroll a bit down, I want to show you the surface here. As you see, the surface is the most complex element here because the surface can be uh, a different regarding the elevation of the material. So let me bring up uh, basically an idea of material design. The, the idea of material design that if your element need to be showed to the user that this element is on the top, of other elements. This element should have a 
visually different design than other elements. And to understanding this, for example, if the element is higher, should be higher by, um, by the user perspective, or should be closer to the user screen, this element should have a bigger elevation. And the same with the containers. If this element should be closer to the uh, user screen, so let's say it's up on, on the top of other elements to compare it to other, other, other elements. If this element should be on the top, this element should have lighter surface contrast on the dark theme. So if we will bring up the material design kit, basically this is where we started. We just get a material design kit from the Figma and we try to change the elements there so we can see how our colors will look like on the material theme and can we use them in our design system. So when we start changing the design, basically we only change the dark theme here because we just don't want to waste the time. So we changed, let me just give a second. So we changed according the, the, to the, our old styles we change the colors here, as you see in the color seam, and we go back to see how the elements looks like if we will use the material design from the scratch. And I can show you that the all elements looks like this, very similar, right, to what we did, basically to our design system, very, very similar. And uh, the interesting thing is that this one labels, and as you see from the labels, the color change basically on the definition of these elements. If this element should be on the top, the, the color should be lighter. And this element should be on the bottom, or just basically on the bottom, comparing to the other elements, this, the, this should be a, um, a darker color. So if I will bring up these also elements, this also have a different container, surface color inside there. So the surface color here is changing based on the element comparing to the other elements. Let me just bring this back. So if we will start comparing our design, as you see, the background here should be on the bottom. So to understand the material design better, I bring up our design here and I even Google the material design principles one more time. So I want to show you one more step here. But the, basically the elevation here is the bigger because the element should be closer to the user, to the user screen. And the second example here is that they define, for example, where the elements here, basically to the screen position to the user. So the floating button here is the closest. This is the ending of the screen user. This is the, where's the screen uh, of the user, right? The closest to the user screen is the floating action button. So it's action button have, has a biggest elevation here. And the same, for example, for the driver. If the driver here basically closest to the user screen, to the right, it has biggest elevation and the floating action button behind it, as you see behind it, this is the main idea. And they are, sh they are also showing how you need to do because in some cases you have an elevation and then you have an, uh, a floating action button sh which should be on the top of the some place where elevation already defined it. So this button should be always on the top. You need to think about this uh, in case of how close this element to the user screen. If this is, if this element closer to the user screen, the elevation should be bigger. And the container, the container, let me just bring this back, the container surface color should be lighter. Okay, I basically you understand. So if we will bring up this idea here, the background here is a, a long away from the user screen, right? But this card is closer, closer to the user screen. And on this card we have one more card, which should be lighter than this one, because it's more closer. It's on the top of this card, right? That's where all of these buttons create their design, because we understand that some points here, some items should be closer to the user design. This means like their surface container color should be lighter. And in this case, this is a good uh, example, because this is the most closest, uh, let's say, uh, cheap choice to the user screen. The, because and, it, and that's why this is a, a lighter. If I bring up the canvas again, there, there we have a fourth step. And before the fourth step, I want also discuss about the dialects because the dialects is some, some specific topic and dialects can be different on the mobile and on the web. 
to understand this key principle better, let me just bring up our, you can see that the dialogues is some specific case where on the mobile, it should look like a full page. But if I will go to the web, if I do, if I go to the web, it should look like a full, uh, the full dialogue with overlaying uh, under okay, elements. This is something, something specific, which we define it in our design system. And this is not something which you need to do, but it's just a knowledge, right? As I, as I discussed earlier, why we do this, because we want to have a cross-platform application. And as I said earlier, we also will do a, a mobile view better and better with the some time period. So to make design consistent and to make the same view and to not create a new view for specifically for the mobile, we want to reuse them and to reuse them, we need to create specific rules. This is the, the main rule, which we are break here because of the cross-platform application. Okay, so if I will bring up our uh, panel here again, the third step will be you need to deeply understand the principles, right? So the fourth step will be here, the four principle here, you need to consistently review and improve your design system. You, let me just write this down. This step I actually got from the idea of application development. So in application development, you can't actually do some development stuff and forget about it. You need consistently go back and uh, improve one by one elements which you defined it previously. You need to consistently go back, uh, go back on some components after a while and update them according to the new changes and principles which your project appears. Think about it as a body or a mind. You never stop going to the gym because you have good biceps. You still go there because you want to grow uh, and you have a good biceps, you need to have a good legs and then you need to fix up your chest and so on. So you consistently going to the gym and trying to improve your, your body. The same here, you consistently need to go back to your design system and improve it over the time. If I, we come back to our design system, I can show, I can show you what we had from the start when we created the project and what we are planning to do in the future. We actually understand our problems and define them. So we come back in our design after MVP, we understand what actually works for us and what not and start defining and finding these problems to fix. So if I will show you, this is our current design, which we have on our platform. And if I will go to the other files uh, with the second design, we already started defining the the key principles here and the problems which we had in previous design and start improving them. So the key feature here, as you see, it's a header, it's an elements, basically the buttons, because we will bring back the material design. We start understanding that in some cases we have an icons, this icons is not visible and uh, the buttons is also different. The design in some cases is not consistent, but what only one thing which we need to change here, and it, it was really quickly because the main time consuming here is what well, was understanding the principle and see the differences in our design system and in material. But after we will, after we was, but after we were found these differences, only one thing which we need to do is just go back to our elements in our design system, to our components here. And we just bring up our custom components which we had and we changed them according to our new rules, which follow better the material design. Okay, guys, we reviewed the design principles that we are using in our design system and the problems we had with our app and also define the steps that you can use in your development to make better decisions. I hope this was interesting and valuable. So stay tuned to our new workshop series. Have a good day.